Should I switch? Should I not switch? Am I switching? That's the question in hand with the Galaxy Z Fold 6. And I've decided this is the device I am going to switch to. So here's why. There are a lot of features that Samsung brings with the Z Fold 6 that makes a lot of sense. And there are many features that I would like that are just not here. I'm a big user of the Galaxy Note series. I started from the Note 1 and I feel like the Z Fold is the next successor to the Note line. Hear me out. I use the S24 Ultra. It's a fantastic device. It's it's right here. It's solid. It's got the S Pen, which I use. And I want to see some of that here. And you're going, it doesn't have it, but why do you like this device and why are you switch it? First, it's lighter. It's comfortable, easy to hold, easy to carry around. And after the Samsung event, I went to London with my wife, had a little short vacation, walking around the city with this. It's just easy to hold and very comfortable, which is nice. Previous versions, the Z4 5 had the rounded edges and not everybody might like the more cornered edges here. For me, it felt really easy to walk around with it, take photos, shoot videos. And speaking of videos and content on here, the camera is pretty good. Now it's the same camera module except the ultra wide, which is new, but Samsung has a new engine to actually drive better processing off here. And I think the photos and images look really good when you kind of look at them, you know, just again, I'm, I'm around London. I also took some in Paris as well. I look dapper, don't I, right? I look really good. I know you like it too. But anyway, shooting with this phone around the city was great. And that's where my next experience with this actually stepped in. Battery life. I was impressed because this past Saturday, my wife was like, look, we're in London, we always come here, but we never actually do any sightseeing. I really don't like sightseeing to be fair, but I was like, All right, okay, cool. So I picked up my Galaxy Z Fold 6, my Galaxy Watch Ultra, sorry, not the ring. This is actually ultra human, still waiting for my Galaxy ring and um, my buds. And we basically went out and walked, I think we took about 25,000 steps walked around the city, went on London Bridge, which is not the bridge with the towers, that is Tower Bridge, which you can see in the photos, completely different. Um, and we took photos and videos everywhere. But I would like the fact that I was able to use the device from roughly, I would say around uh, 10 a.m. to about 12 midnight using this device. Recording video on here as well, taking photos. That was really impressive. I love the fact that I was able to use it quite effectively. I felt like I was getting double the amount of battery life that I used. Now, granted, at this point in time, I was still not using as much apps as I use daily on my S24 Ultra, but I liked that experience. So for me, that was really good. Now, the next point is versatility. And what I mean by versatility is the fact that, look, that day in London, we did a lot of sightseeing and we did a lot of eating and drinking. So of course, I had to eat and drink, but I also had to capture content. And having a foldable is uniquely well served for that. So there was a place we went to in Shortage. It's called Bao. They make some great Bao buns and the food was impressive, very good. Everything on the menu was, was great. But I wanted to capture it and I didn't want to have my wife record or hold the phone and just put it in this like slightly tilted tent mode. I dropped it up on top of the counter, as you can see and shot just right down. And it was nice to have that uh, vlogger experience. I've never really vlogged in my life and I can understand the appeal. I like the idea of like capturing moments. I was able to do this with this phone. Not saying you can't do it with any other phone, but the fact that you have to prop it, you have to kind of go back to it, you know, all that stuff. This for me helps me do my work as a YouTuber even better. Now, the next thing, of course, is the screen real estate. And you're going, that cover display is still small. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the internal display, which is massive and bigger because, of course, it's slightly wider, one millimeter. This is also slightly wider internally and as well as slightly wider here. Now, you know the specs. I'm not going to repeat them for you. Everybody who's watching this video understands. But also, it's 2600 nits max brightness. So they've increased it from last year, which means as I go outside, stand in the sun, it looks super bright, both the cover display and the internal display, which is great. Now, the gaming experience is great. You guys have seen my gaming video. If you haven't, go check it out. It does really well. The new cooling Samsung has added to it, it's really added a lot to it. Plus the speakers, which you can check out my speaker test, really give you a good idea of what that audio experience is. But, when you pair it with the Galaxy Buds 
3 Pro uh, and use the Pro video mode. You can actually shoot using the microphone uh, to record either 360 audio or mix or just from Bluetooth. And at Tower Bridge, at London Tower, I was able to do some recording, but I want you guys to hear and listen to that for yourself. This is Tower Bridge, or this is London Tower Castle, to be frank. And uh, yeah, it's uh, old, very old. Behind me is Tower Bridge itself. You get the idea? Oh, look at these guys. I absolutely love planes. I love plane spotting. I love looking at different aircrafts, airlines, all that fun stuff. I'm here at the Virgin Atlantic Lounge and we have an awesome uh, sky garden, if you will, which allows you to train spot, you know, to see stuff around. But I'm actually talking off the microphone on the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro connected to, of course, my Galaxy Z Fold 6. So you get the idea, listen to my little description of London Tower. And honestly, anyone who knows the date of when it was built, let me know. And also, my Av Geeks, what are your favorite planes? You get the idea. I love planes. And as much as the A350 is such a great plane, I'm a Boeing guy. I know, that sounds terrible. It does. It does. Because of the 747. The 747 has been a plane that I've absolutely loved. But I digress. Now you're wondering, what about this in my hand? This is the Galaxy Watch Ultra. I used it throughout the whole trip, did some workouts. I will say the workout experience using this has been good. Being able to go to the gym and not care about banging it on kettlebells or dumbbells or things like that. It's great to have a watch like this. Now, it feels bulky, bulky and it looks bulky. Um, and I think the strap also adds to that as well. So I'm waiting for some new straps to try. And the design, yes, a lot of people say it copies the uh, Apple Apple Watch Ultra. I say no. It does copy, copy that orange button, which is factual. But this design, actually, the Gear Sports Active, I believe, is something they've had before. And also, they are watches that do have a boxy look with a round bezel. I do wish this was a rotating bezel, like a physical rotating bezel. That would have been cool, Samsung. Please, next version, just do that. Maybe a... Um, blood pressure monitor as well into this bad boy. I don't know why people don't do that. I don't think Apple does that either. I'm still waiting for my ring because I want to combine both together like that, you know, just like pair them up together in some Power Ranger unique, like, you know, way and use it. But I'm liking this ecosystem build that Samsung is doing. And look, don't get me wrong. There are negatives to the fold. I said earlier, I wish it was wider. I wish this was wider. Yes, the internal screen would be probably this wide. Still would be fine because the external screen will also be wide enough where I don't have to use it. You also have enough space for an S Pen and you have enough space for even a bigger battery. So I think there are a lot of things Samsung needs to do. Now, the main question here is that while I have switched over and I'm using this, and I'm loving the experience, is it worth picking up or worth switching over? And there are some caveats to this. If you're on a Z Fold 3, Yes, absolutely, switch. Um, this is a better device all around. If you're moving from a Z Fold 5, no, I don't think so. You have the same camera hardware. You probably will get the updates to the camera uh, processing as well. Um, so I would say for a Z Fold 5 user isn't the case. My biggest caveat here is pricing because in the sixth generation, I would love to see the pricing for foldables go down. I understand it's still a premium device, and should have a sensor and air of premium value. But I would like to see a starting price point at 1500, maybe 1300. I know I'm daydreaming there, but 1500, meaning where the Galaxy S24 or the Ultra series ends, the fold begins. Because that would be a nice crossing point for a lot of people to say, hey, okay, cool, I can pick this up. This makes a lot of sense. So those are my thoughts. I've been using this. I'm absolutely enjoying the device. I know it's not for everyone. And I know some people will complain. But honestly, 
to each is their own. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, notification icon, all the fun stuff. If you have questions, leave them down for me in the, in the comment section, I'll answer them. And if you want to pick up this device or any of the devices, including the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro, which I have done a video, you go check out. Use my links down below. This is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment. I just had to do that.